Hey, great baseball. We keep saying it. Baseball sort of stealing October back from the NFL. Hey, However, there it's is so a, great. Mahomes was there losing his uh, losing his mind last night. You see that? I mean, tonight a game of significance for Dan Byer Seahawks and my 49ers, but Major League Baseball has had their moment. NFL big game tonight, so maybe they'll steal a little of that momentum back. But I don't want to pile on because I respect him. In fact, he's a broadcasting legend and a hero. But let me ask Dan Byer, being that he's got his ear to all this in the broadcasting world, what what's with the TBS Bob Costas seems like it's a delay. Like he doesn't have a view of the field. I feel he's like, missing calls. Like, I feel like there's an obstruction like is, in his view. Are we missing he's sitting a, in front of a foul pole or something? Are we missing a layer of the story, or is Bob Costas just great for the Olympics interviews? And we forgot that maybe baseball is not for him. Anymore? I think that we are tougher on Bob Costas because he will speak up on other issues, or some people think puts himself on a pedestal. I actually don't mind hearing Bob Costas' voice. Not that he was the voice of my generation, but he was a voice of a generation. So I like to have the older voices that are there, and there aren't a lot that are still around. I just think because of who Bob Costas is, you didn't get that with other generational broadcasters. I I love Bob Costas too, DB, but there's something about... The best exhibit would be if you were in, in court. You're like, Exhibit A, listen to Adam Amin's call. The best exhibit, pimp my ride, bro. I'm not saying that his calls are, are, are good, but what I'm saying is that we're we're jumping on him where we would give the benefit of the doubt to other people who have been around. Al Michaels, I actually feel like we laugh about and say, man, what's... You know, Al, he just he couldn't stand that game last night. You know, he may have, may have lost his step, ha, ha, ha. But with Costas, we're like, God, know, get him I, out of this. I agree. There's a, there's a layer. I hear Al Michaels on Thursday Night Football, and while he does sound at times disinterested and a little angry and older, it's still like, man, Al Michaels sounds like a big game. Bob Costas, it doesn't fit. Like the Olympics, an interview with an A-list celebrity or athlete. Like Bob me, Costas is a legend. That he sounds like he's on delay or something. It feels like he's on location and not watching it, the game in real it time. It sounds like Bob Costas is AI Bob Costas. It does. Yeah. It, it sounds like that. So for me, it has nothing to do with anything he may have said in the past or anything he's associated with or anything like that at all. I, I respect him as a broadcaster. I feel like Ron Darling's watching the game and he's watching from like a TV set somewhere else. Like there's some sort of disconnect where he's on a slight second delay taking away from the call. I actually ran my voice through an AI generator. This is not a joke. He did this morning. (laughs) Uh, With the exact same call, it sounded the exact same. And that one's gone. Like the same inflection. It sounds like the the voiceover for a video game. Not not to put you on the spot. So again, nothing personal. But do you have have the Lindor home run next to the Giancarlo Stanton home run? If you could find that, if it's you could, a great if you could depiction find that, of what we're talking because about. Because you hear Adam Amin on FS1 calling this game equally, Mets, Phillies, every moment of excitement. He's got the inflection, the excitement. And Bob Costas, for a go-ahead eighth-inning home run for Stanton, it just felt like he was calling a game in May. You heard Ron Darling sound a little frustrated with his call yesterday. So it's not just us. There was a moment in the game where... Bob Costas thought there was a single up the middle, and Volpe made a real nice diving catch. He's like, he smothered it. Is it a single? And he's like, no, it's not. <laughs> Darling's yeah, like, no, no it's Dar- not. Darling was like, no. If you missed that, take a listen. He was like, did he catch it? Line drive, base hit the center field. It was smothered out there. I don't know if it was caught. It was caught. Oh, my gosh. What a play. It's a good thing that Witt saw it before I did. He slammed on the brakes and went back. Everyone oh my God. saw it. That's what you get Bob. when he rushes to make a call, guys. That's <laughs> what you get. Ron Darling's thinking, could could you give me Keith Hernandez and Gary Cohen no. back, please? Thank he, you. He caught it, Bob. Eh, look, it, it, when you notice that's a bad thing, and, and it seems to be noticeable, and maybe social media does bring it more to light than it normally would be. So it's been a thing. I acknowledge it. Because the Yankee games haven't sounded as exciting as the other ones you're talking about. I'm telling you, I am never the guy that piles on. In fact, I like Joe Buck. I like Al Michaels. All the all the announcers that people love to just bust their chops, I'm usually defending them. Like, yeah, I I got nothing against Bob Costas. He's a legend. I love Bob Costas. But in this particular assignment, it's not working. Bob Costas is the voice of a generation. Al Michaels, Joe Buck. I'm with DB. These are the legends you want to hear. But for some reason, it's... I also think it's a sound mix. 
something's going on. Yeah, maybe like that. Maybe you know how when recording artists have like a delay in their headphone, they have a hard time singing. Like maybe Bob Costas has something going on in his earpiece where he's confused by something because oh. something's off. But I think that he's fair game. Sorry to interrupt. I think that because of who Bob Costas is and what he said in the past makes him fair game. I remember when Keith Jackson, the longtime college football you know, voice, RIP to Keith Jackson, he also lost a step. It maybe wasn't saying things and understanding the rules, but we weren't piling on because of who Keith Jackson was. He was the voice of our generation. I think with Costas, who he is, it allows us the opportunity to to take those shots, to have articles and blogs about Bob Costas. I saw, I saw I, the New York Post, Barstool, um, John Boy. Yeah, but they Fox, wouldn't do that to Al ESPN. Michaels. But it wouldn't be to Al Michaels. Like, there wouldn't be saying. an Al Michaels, even though yeah. there are similar things. I think that Costas' past and what he's done and how he's done it may have rubbed people the wrong way or they f- think that he thinks he's – holier than thou or mightier than thou. So now when he isn't... Oh, the leaked they, audio of him also not wanting to read a promo? Did you hear that? No. Coming well, back from a look, commercial. Maybe like, all this is true. That's not where I'm coming from. Let me make that clear then. And I feel a little bad piling on, as you said, Rich, because I don't want to pile on, but I have ears and eyes, and I notice what I'm, what I'm witnessing. You know, maybe it's just a matter of he's 72 years old and his timing's a little off. I don't know. So that's why I want to be... Kind and give him grace, as the kiddos are saying, because we don't know what's going on, but it's noticeable. He, let me just put it this way. He's not the first person to maybe lose their fastball. There you go. But I think that the amount of what we are piling on and talking about him maybe is not proportional to other situations. No doubt. There's certainly people that get a tougher time than others. Yes. Bob Costas, by the way, what I was talking about, he was on a hot mic, and they... They want him to do a live read coming back from the commercial. And he said, Oh, a CNN commercial? Well, that puts me in a tough spot. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> but but he said that, oh. and they're like, Your mic's hot. I want to bring up this one point, and then we'll move on from baseball. Bob Costas, a legend. We're not trying to pile on, but it was very clear that the enthusiasm that FS1, and again, we have no affiliation with FS1, Fox Sports Radio and FS1, not like affiliated completely, which means it's not like I'm being a homer here. Adam Amin, listen to his home run call with Lindor. The 2-1. Lindor towards right center field. This one is back. It is gone! Grand slam! And Lindor puts the Mets on top! The biggest swing of the season for New York! Now, let's be real, though. It was a grand slam in a crucial moment, so you gotta factor that into it, too. But it was tied 2-2. In Kansas City, and Giancarlo gets up to the plate. Take a listen. High fly ball, deep left field. Back goes Melendez. Forget about it. It's gone. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hold on. It, also, about keep it. in mind, it the Mets were playing at home. You missed Yankees the best part. Yankees playing in Kansas City. All right, here it comes. You missed the best part. The best when part. he has like, right. like a nerdy, like, uh, you could sum up the evening with uh, Giancarlo. In large yeah. part. Here, in lo- yeah. here it comes. Listen. Part this night has belonged to Giancarlo Stanton, and he gives the Yankees the lead three two in the eighth. Oh, I heard mm. a glitch. Maybe it is AI. Maybe it's an AI Bob Costas. What's yeah, up, DB? So awkward. Maybe he's more into trying to story tell than call the game. Yeah, I think yeah, maybe. You know, yeah. so maybe that's like the because it sure seemed like it on that last part. Different that's styles. Why, that's why I think he works so great for the Olympics. Sure, a lot of great storylines there. He's a storyteller. He's a storyteller. Yeah. But Stick to the Olympics. Noticeable. Bob. Noticeable. He <laughs> doesn't yeah. even do that anymore. I know. Oh. 